And good morning, Karen. Good morning, Curtis. Uh, we are delighted to be with the 100 Kin 10 network today uh, in this virtual forum. And uh, we wanted to share with you some of the uh, learnings that we've had over the past almost decade of doing this work with Food Solutions New England. Uh, but let's first start by introducing ourselves. Karen, do you want to start? Yes, hello everyone again. I'm Karen Speller and I am located in Massachusetts. My organization is CAS Consulting and I am affiliated strongly, heart, heart connected with Food Solutions New England. And my role with Food Solutions New England is as an ambassador for the state outreach and convening and leaning in. I'm also a steering committee member and network team member. So my role is interconnected in so many different ways. And I am one of the co-leads of the 21 day racial equity habit building challenge. Why I do this work? I do this work because it is very part of my, my being that I want to be in, live in, and leave behind uh, something that's so much different for people, uh, for everyone, especially people of color. Curtis. Yeah, thanks, Karen. Tell us a little bit. A, a little bit, sure. Uh, <laughs> so Curtis Ogden, I, uh, my uh, you know, day job, as they say, is with the Interaction Institute for Social Change, which is based in Boston, uh, and I've been with it for 15 years. And it's in that capacity that I've come to be uh, uh, the facilitator of the Food Solutions New England Network, which is one, one network that I work with. Uh, and, and like Karen, have been a co-facilitator of the Race Equity Challenge now in its sixth year. Uh, why I do this work, uh, it's just, it's just uh, everything about who I am. Uh, finding my people in Karen and our colleagues who are working for just, sustainable, democratically owned and operated food systems is just brings together so much that I care about in terms of racial justice, in terms of uh, sustaining the planet that feeds us, that sustains us, um, and working in community. So uh, this is just who I am doing this work and uh, blessed to have, who have, to have found it and to have found you, Karen, uh, given our common background, uh, two transplants from Michigan now in New England. But Karen, we wanted to share a couple of quotes that fire us up uh, in doing our work. Um, and so showing those here. Absolutely, absolutely. We say fire us up, fire us up. This is uh, Frederick Douglass, and we all know of him as an orator, an abolitionist, and an anchor in this movement. If there's no struggle, there's no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom yet defecate agitation are men who want crops without plowing up the ground and want rain without the thunder and lightning. And they want the ocean without the awful roar of its many waters. Mm -hmm. I know every time I hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets you. It gets you. Thank you. Yes, and another meaningful quote uh, for us uh, as a network comes from Marge Piercy, uh, Michigan based poet. Uh, and this is just a piece of her Seven of Pentacles, but very much informs our network weaving activity. Keep reaching out, keep bringing in. This is how we're going to live for a long time. Not always, for every gardener knows that after the digging, after the planting, after the long season of tending and growth, the harvest comes. And yeah. uh, take us into FSNE. The what, the so, why. The what and the why, and a little bit of the how. So, Food Solutions New England is a six state network focusing on the transformation of our food system. And we came together uh, with the University of New Hampshire Sustainability Institute, looking at all the, the work that was going on in our region and thinking that we could do this better together. So let's think about what it would be if we were more connected and thinking more intentional about what our work together could build in the midst. And this is something we've been working on for 10 years. Again, when we talk about the who, 
Uh, we're talking about this is across the spectrum of food system work. So we're looking at science, soil science. We're looking at farming, urban and rural. We're looking at educators, whether you're in, in grade school or higher level education. We're looking at fishermen and farmer, community activists, every spectrum of it, advocacy, those in policy, those in seed saving. So when you think about the system, it is interconnected, and that's how we think about it, interconnect, interconnected, intergenerational, and all in the service of creating a sustainable food system that feeds and serves us all. Mm. Yes. That's, that's why we came together. And with racial equity, when we began looking, as Curtis said, um, more deeply about our, the values that we, we held, uh, we recognized that one of those that was binding us was equity and racial equity at the core. Absolutely. And so when we talk about justice, we've been explicitly calling out racial equity for a variety of reasons. And uh, so wanted to talk about why race in particular and why equity. Um, race, while that's one, you know, uh, difference and identity along which uh, inequities and disparities play out, you could say gender is as well and class um, and literacy, but there's something about race in particular in the history of this country and uh, in its uh, predictive nature of who has opportunity and who does not that move this to the center of our commitment to say this is about race and, and we're gonna start with race. Uh, and we're not gonna talk about uh, trying to achieve racial equality, we're going to try and achieve racial equity. Because equality means giving everybody the same. Equity means starting with an understanding that we have very different uh, beginning points, uh, kind of along the lines of what the image to the right here says in terms of reality. And so giving people the same in that kind of situation does not really do much to achieve access and, and opportunity and um, mutual thriving. And so we began a journey more explicitly back in about 2013 um, at one of our food summits where uh, a conversation began to uh, really grow uh, out of a session that Karen held um, that was standing room only about race and racism in the food system. And there was really a self-organized effort um, that said we need to now start moving this to the center and, and begin with educating more of us about its importance and its bearings on our food system. And that really launched us into uh, a learning process that continues to this day uh, with efforts to further diversify our network structure. It was fairly diverse uh, when we started with our network team and yet did not really have the voices of food chain workers, did not have voices of some of the younger up and coming generations and particularly uh, leaders of color. And so over time, that equity commitment has led us to the engagement of uh, network weavers of color, including Karen and Senator Marilyn Moore um, and, 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 and others who are uh, extending reach uh, and going more deeply into communities that are marginalized and not included in this network. It has included um, diversifying um, our gatherings, the summits that we've held uh, through the creation of delegations for food chain workers for younger leaders of color. It has included training and capacity building. It has included ripples of this moving out into the different states, into statewide gatherings and in local gatherings. Um, it has included disaggregating data, which shows us that across the spectrum in terms of who has not just access to food, but even access to capital uh, to start food related businesses, there are vast disparities. Um, that again are being uh, revealed and exacerbated in these times of COVID. I wanted to show this, you know, this our, our pathway toward the vision. Um, and just oh, see if there's anything you wanted it. to share about th this, this path, which we're very much on, which is a winding road. It is a winding road. And, and what, what people love about this is that there, we often talk about these strategies and approaches in, you know, in text but being able to see it visually with people, people engaged in it. 
So this sustainable economies is one of the places we go, building a business case, which we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, we're in the midst of the business case already being done. Right? Being made for us, right? If, if we didn't know, if we didn't know, we, we know now. Uh, but this was, these were three of the leverage areas that we, we were, were focusing on as a result of, of other work that we've done as a network. And uh, it's new narrative. A new narrative there is, I lift that up because one of the key things for us is revealing and celebrating stories and reality. When we say stories, we're not talking about uh, fantasy. We're talking about real lived experience is a story and being able to lift those up and bring those into our transformation so that they are our foundation, again, as this is our pathway to the vision, that they're woven in and very much a part of that. We think about sustainable economies. Yes, we want to make sure that our farmers and fishermen, retail, all entrepreneurs, everybody in that are moving forward in their production, moving forward in their sustainability and, 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 and health of their organizations, their businesses in all of this and us being able to contribute in that however we can. And democratic empowerment, we want to really lift up the fact that we all have that power. Uh, we have that power with our fork, as we often say, when we spend our money and how, and how we often spend our time. So being able to create spaces for all three of these things to happen interconnectedly, intergenerationally, Multi, multifacetedly is something that we are always working towards. So we wanted to leave you with just maybe a few takeaways from this very rich uh, 10 years of doing this work, which builds on work that others were already doing in the region um, and that many others uh, you know, at local, state, and regional levels are, are, are working on. Um, but as the poet said, keep reaching out and keep bringing in. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to Karen as, as this incredible network weaver who's constantly bringing people in, reaching out and bringing people in, that that is the robustness, the diversity, um, and the richness of our network. Um, Karen, you want to say something about the second bullet? Oh, keep a multi-generational mindset and practice. Uh, we do multi-generational is so important because there is wisdom in our elders, wisdom, knowledge, and love that we need to lean in on and build upon. And that interconnectedness actually fuels both and. It fuels our young people to be connected to something that's important and rich and deep. And it also fuels those who have been in this, this fight for decades to keep moving and keep sharing and keep keep the movement forward. So I, I, that intergenerational piece for me of, and Curtis is so important because that's what makes it real. That's what Absolutely. makes it real. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we talk about this as being generational work. This is 25 year work at least to make these kinds of transformations. As we think about generations to come, I'm, I'm thinking about Barbara A. Holmes and her uh, video, mm -hmm. which is in our prompt today, where she invites us to be our ancestors' wildest dreams. Yes. So think about those who are up and coming. And, 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 and so part of the reaching out and bringing in is not just about a mass, but it's about more of each one of us engaging hearts and minds and bodies, which is, is, is key, is so key to advancing change when we have more of us in the fight, uh, in the advancement. And it's, it's, it's key to embracing equity, just given how much race, racism, whiteness have um, lodged in our bodies and actively caused trauma. We can't just be heady in this work. We have to bring our bodies, we have to bring our hearts, which is why our prompts in the 21 day challenge speak to that kind of holistic nature of our being um, mm -hmm. um, so that we can work mm -hmm. out what needs to be worked out and has been denied and bring our energy to this work, <laughs> right? Right, right, and Curtis, we also talk about it in terms of grace. That's right. We talk about it in terms of grace, giving grace to ourselves uh, for any, missteps or something we did not know back when, right? But also grace to others as we join this journey 
together because we often recognize that we're not we're not monolithic <laughs> no no means you know and so we act, actually as we're bringing our full selves to this transformation to this work that we have to also give us grace as we're learning and growing together absolutely learning and growing and struggling which is the quote you, you you kicked us off with right going back to yeah. frederick Douglass, which yeah. is there's often not an invitation and struggle right but we know that there is joyful struggle right there is is joy in this work even when it's hard that's where the life is that's where our allies and our compatriots are this is this is where we taste life in its fullness um and uh yeah so let's keep struggling and struggle together it's 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 the good work <laughs>